before you ask, yes, I was very, very sad in the last video. Welcome back to the kid at the back. If you're new here, hi, I'm Voya. I play a variety of games. If you ever want me to play something, please don't hesitate to ask. And with all that being said, let's get started. Now, I am extremely frustrated because I don't know what I can do to protect Crow. I think I can't protect him there and myself as well. Like I can't protect myself or him. We are already where sitting at a whopping four and him only two. I think what I have to do is avoid kissing Crow in this playthrough. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And so um, I'm going to say I don't because I didn't get to see this one. You don't? No, I don't. I believe in one's hard work. Does that count? <laughs> Crow merely chuckled at your statement. With a hand resting on his chest, he shakes his head slightly as if he couldn't believe he just heard you say that. I don't mind the people who believe in them. I just don't like the way some of them worship the very ground these so-called gods walk on. You scoffed. I believe that everything is made possible through everyone's effort, be it as a team or as an individual. That's a fair statement. It's not like you're crapping on anyone's religion. It is true that sometimes people take religion to the extreme and like, oh, like use it for everything. Like they'll be a terrible person to somebody and be like, oh yeah, it's because God told me to and, and all this other stuff. And you're like, your God told you to do this, to do something so terrible. But anyways, so yeah, I just feel like that's a fair statement. Their believers only give credit to these deities for everything, and it's an insult to the forgotten people who sacrifice themselves to make things happen. You recall the town folks who endlessly praised and worshipped the patron deity. For the bountiful harvest you and your father broke sweat and tears for, that's fair again these are fair things to say like i'm not gonna say that oh yeah i agree with it i do agree with it i do agree with it because i don't think that people should be taking uh religion to extreme and i'm not gonna get into it on here not on this uh video right now we're focusing on crow you watch as the efforts of your labor were all thrown to some individual being which as far as you knew returned nothing but calamities one after the other "'Twas only a miracle that you, your father, and your dang farmland are still standing and your crops still thriving, even after so much damage." Crow noticed the way that your brows furrowed. He says nothing, but the look in his eyes tells you that he shares the same sentiments wholeheartedly. Oh man. Um, did that just give us another one? <sighs> dang it. I'm trying not to hit 10. Well, since we're at six, I'm just not going to kiss him. That, that's what I'm going to do. This is why we're two peas in the same pod. How about you? Do you believe in gods? You turn to Crow, repeating the same question he asked you earlier. He scans your face, your eyes, your nose, then your lips. His lingering gaze made you shrink back, your heart fluttering slightly. Uh-oh. Crow seems to realize something to himself as he returns his attention to the stars above, sighing. I don't. This surprised you, and Crow laughs at your visible shock and confusion. So we've already seen this part before, so I'm going to skip past this. So here we are. Let's hug him instead. You didn't feel as bad as before, but your vessel is not completely empty yet. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Somehow, just looking at Crow at the comfort he brought you made you want to bask in it longer until you were sure you had no tears left to shed. You lean down once more, you bury your face in the crook of his neck, and his arms instinctively wrap around you. His hug warm and soothing as he waits for you to gather your thoughts. Crow rubs circles on your back, a silent way to tell you that he was there. You were not alone. 
Oh, this is so cute. And that he'd be there whenever you needed him. He didn't say a word, understanding that you needed silence more than anything right now. You couldn't thank him enough for always knowing what you needed. Okay, so this should be us going home. I'm going to go ahead and skip past this and see if maybe that helped. Let's see where it's at now. It's only at a solid seven. So I'm just going to see if like we can save Crow. Okay, so I can't skip it. So we have to read through this. You have no idea exactly how long you remained in that embrace while lying down on the grass, but you feel a lot better that you are ready to get back up on your feet. Okay. Hello? Okay, it wasn't going. You pull away, meeting Crow's eyes that seem to ask about your well-being. Fixing his collar, he turns to you. Are you good to go? You could read just that from his gaze. You nod slightly, and it is only then that Crow completely releases you from his embrace, helping you sit up before he dusts off the crass that's struck, excuse me, that's stuck to his shirt. Excuse me, I said struck, Lord. He gives you a once-over and gently swats away the leaves on your hair and clothes. Okay, so this is, this is all the same. Let's skip it. I cannot skip it. There's something else coming up. You get up and Crow retrieves his bag, almost forgotten by the tree. He looks back at you and takes your hand silently. It was time to go. It was time to leave this magical place. You looked at the stars, at how brightly they shone. You gave the sky one last glance before turning away, hand clasped tightly around Crow's as you let him lead you home. So again, I'm going to try to skip it. Let's see what happens. So it stopped me right here where it was talking about the maiden. So maybe this is different. And this maiden, she lives with no other thought than to love and to be loved by me. The one who loves. I was a child. She was a child. In this kingdom by the sea. Okay. Day two. Let's see how good this one goes. Okay. Hold on, this is different now. The sun setting by the horizon colors the grass he fields into a deep golden orange as the wind made some strands of hair brush across your face. Your ever beloved home, the tall grass, the fresh air, the various farm animals that you and your family raised since you were a mere child. You can't even imagine what was happening before you right now as a group of people came while they talked with your father. So we kind of know what happens here. I don't fully remember what happens here, but I do remember this happening in the last one. Your only family member left. You see the distress in your father's eyes as he tries his best to negotiate with people before him. The desperation in his voice, the sweating running down his neck as he moves around his hand, gesturing this and that. Please, just give me more time. I promise I can pay up. This is all we have left. I don't know where else to go if we lose the farmland. We've given you enough chances already, Mr. Ema. If you don't pay up your debt, we will take your land. Oh, man. My poor dad. So, so it's going back into that thing that happened. I'm going to see if this is different. I hope it's different. I don't want to see Crow dead again. So I'm going to skip it. I cannot skip it. Okay, so this is different. The loud ringing of the bell rang across the hallway, making you jerk out of your thoughts. Students came out through the classroom doors. You feel someone shaking you awake. Oh, it's Crow. Oh, thank goodness we, we got it. He's alive. He's alive. And what are we at now? Uh oh, I didn't mean to skip it. Okay, we're at, we're at a solid seven. I think in order to keep him alive, I think we have to spend time with Crow. You set up and met face to face with Crow. Well, good morning, Sleeping Beauty. You let out a yawn. You rub your eyes and you look around. Your fellow classmates are now gone from their seats as it is, it is now lunchtime. Blah, I bit my tongue saying that. What? 
what did I miss? Nothing important, though if you're having doubts, I can lend you my notes afterwards. Thanks, Crow, you're a lifesaver. Anything for you, Voya. You recall the little dream you had. You quickly shake it off and let out a stretch, popping a few joints before you got up and went out of your classroom with Crow and Toe. You met up with the group of friends seeing Darrow with Geo and Crow waiting by the lockers, Brittany coming along behind them, and Jess. You wave at them. Jesus, the music got super loud in my ear. <laughs> well, look at all of them. I mean, I guess I'd rather hang out with them and have them all here. Sorry, I'm fixing my mic. Um, have them all here than to have one of them, you know, gone. So I don't mind hanging out with them. Good afternoon to y'all. Regards, Darrow. How was class? Boring and boring. So glad to be out of there. One more useless minor. <laughs> and I'll be out of here. Gio just shrugged, a hand on his hoodie pocket while the other on his phone. We got to at least do something in our major today, though, which I'm glad about. More papers, but it was at least something. I mean, I better, I'd better. rather have work than to not have anything at all. Enough about papers. So about the Halloween party. Any ideas for a costume yet? Um, dang it. I don't think we even thought about that. If they let me choose, I'm going to choose. But I mean, realistically, I didn't think about that. As they talked with each other, at the corner of your eye, you noticed a familiar figure. <gasps> oh, it's so... And Hugo. To be fair, I'm not so mad at Hugo. He's just trying to protect Soul, that's all. It was so. He came out of the classroom, and another person came afterwards behind him, seemingly bored of his mind. Hmm. This is when they're going to skip, aren't? isn't it? This is when they're going to skip school. A join soul, call soul over. To be fair, I'm scared to do anything. Stay with the group. A uh, join soul, maybe. I'm scared to get. I'm scared to get crow to attend. I really am. I guess we can join soul. I think I did this already once before too. You turn to her head to crow in a shy manner, almost hesitant to ask. Oh, um. Crow, is it okay if I leave? I have somewhere to be at. Is that so? There was a slight disappointment in his face, but he lets you continue on. Yeah, sorry I couldn't hang out. Nonsense. I'll see you after lunch instead, then, Voya. If ever you're interested, of course. Oof. I'm so scared. I think as long as I'm not intimate with Crow, it should be fine. Sure thing. You gave Crow one last smile before heading over to where Soul and his companion is. You walk towards the two individuals. They seem to be in deep conversation. However, Soul's noticed your presence and stopped talking. His attention now on you. Sorry, I tried, I was making sure my mic didn't fall over because I bumped it with my fingers. His companions notice the change in his friend's demeanor and follows his gaze as it lands on you. The shorter male greets you with a smile. Hi there. You're friends with Sunny. Sunny? Um, Sunny. He pats Sol on the back, causing the taller male to jerk slightly forward. Sol gives him an irritating <laughs> look, observing the way his face is slowly turning red. I mean, don't, don't do him that way. He doesn't want people to know that's his nickname. You know, because he's such sunshine. He's sunny. You let out a small giggle, shifting your eyes towards Soul as he catches your gaze on his. Upon landing eye contact, Soul quickly averts his gaze away from yours, holding up his hand as he tries his hardest to hide his face away. Like a nickname. Yes, Sunny loves his nickname I gave him. Right, Sunny? Soul remains silent, still refusing to meet your gaze. That's adorable. 
For a moment, the three of you were silent before the shorter male speaks up once more. You sure have taste, Sonny. She's very pretty, like you said. A blush makes its way on your face, scratching the back of your head. You bit your bottom lip as you let out a small thank you. Anyway, nice to meet you. My name's Hugo. I'm the big old grumpy best friend. Yeah, I've, I've met you intimately, I think. Voya, a pleasure to meet you too. He extended a hand for you to take in which you merely accept, shaking it and puts it back to his side, a smile on his face as he did so. So, anyway, what are you up to, Voya? Oh, I just saw you both and I wanted to greet you. More importantly, you check Sol's hand, seeing the bandage now gone. You assumed it got better quickly, but you want to make sure. Are you all right now, Sol? Sol knows exactly what you were talking about before giving you a nod and a small smile. Oh, look at him. He's so cute. I'm doing better. It might leave a scar, but it's nothing for me to worry about. Huh? What? You got injured? Nothing for you to worry about. So quickly dismisses his friend, not wanting him to bombard him with unnecessary questions. Seeing that the taller male refuses to even give him a moment to explain himself, Hugo drops the thought with a shake of his head. Now, this is giving me like an understanding of Hugo and why he talked to me that one time, like when he's like, you know, be careful out here, it's dangerous and stuff, and how overly protective he is of soul. It makes me understand why he did what he did, but I don't like what he did. <laughs> I mean, you can be protective of somebody and not schmill them, you know, just, ouch, stab them, ow, that hurt, ow, it still hurts, ow, 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 I'm better now. But yeah, you can do anything else besides, you know, kill them. Hugo turns his attention back to you. Anyway, we're planning to go on the rooftop today to eat lunch there. The weather's doing much better, unlike yesterday. You want to tag along with us, Voya? You guys aren't a fan of the cafeteria. Upon mentioning the cafeteria, Soul shivered as Hugo only gave a small chuckle. Sonny isn't a huge fan of the noise there. I heard there was a food fight that happened yesterday. Right? Though, not gonna lie, a food fight sounds fun. What are you, high school? Hmm. <laughs> At least have fun a little bit, Sonny. Anyway, enough talking. Let's get going, shall we? Sure. Okay. So, this is so far going okay. I remember this scene being a little bit longer because they're going to go into details and stuff like that. And I just wanted to get it on a path where I'm not absolutely going down a bad end. So, with that being said, let's doubly check this. And it's at a three. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. But I'm going to try to get it higher and keep it like on even ground and not one better than the other thing because I see what happens <laughs> when it is better than the other and I'm gonna dive deep into this more and play through this whole entire thing as best I possibly can but it will be in parts but trust me when I say I will be back so thank you guys so much I truly appreciate it make sure you guys um like and subscribe and all the other stuff that also helps me the engagement the comments and stuff everything even if you just put like a good job voya or a thumbs up and stuff that all helps me in the long run so thank you guys so much this might be short well as a matter of fact let's do this i'm gonna read a little bit of this being on the top so it's not that long but i'm not gonna go through it fully Hugo walks to his usual spot and got himself seated on the bench that you somehow never took notice before. Sol follows along and in his hand is a large wrapped box that caught your interest. Excuse me, I can say attention. Uh, sit beside Sol, sit between them. Let's sit beside Sol. He's the one that's trying to, you know, shank, shank, shank us. Well, Hugo is. 
not him. So we just have to, you know, make happy with both of them. So noticed you from the corner of his eye, the edge of his lip moving upward. You pointed to the box nestled in Soul's hand. Is that your lunch, Soul? You can say that. Soul unwraps the cloth, showing the three bento boxes. He takes out the first bento box that was settled on top before giving the second one to Hugo. Hugo happily accepts the box, thanking Soul before taking out his chopsticks. Opening the container, Hugo lets out an aw sound. Ouch, I hit my mic again. Jesus. His eyes sparkling, drool slowly seeping out of the corner of his open mouth. You actually listened. And did you cut these tiny sausages into octopuses? <laughs> Keep your voice down. It's ringing in my ear. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Wait, I need to take a picture of it. Oh, Placing the box gently on his lap, Hugo rummages through his pocket before taking out his phone. Opening his phone camera, he flips it horizontally, then starts clicking away, taking one or two photos. Hugo lifts the container back into his hands, but not before turning to you and showing you what he keeps gushing about. Oh my! Oh, and it's still cute! Isn't it adorable, Voya? There you see are various ranges of food with rice shape to match a moth, seaweed to design the face along with using cabbage leaf to form its wings. That is so cute. I would have thought that was like some kind of bear or something, but it, it, the antlers, the antennas make it seem more like a moth. Right before the moth are many sausages shaped like octopus. Wonderfully cut carrots were made to look like stars and squeeze beside stuffed shiitake mushrooms. That is so cute. The egg roll sushi and broccoli with melted cheese as a dip look delicious. I almost feel too bad to eat it, especially on how cute this little guy is. Hugo points at the silk moth shaped rice. Oh. Um, uh, Hugo, you got the wrong one. I can't read that. Without wasting another second, Hugo starts digging in, scruffing down on the rice like a wild, hungry animal. Jesus. Did you make this by yourself, Sol? You can say that. Sol answers, opening his own container. You thought you'd see another form of food art made by Sol himself within the container, but instead was greeted by a simple ham and cheese sandwich. He takes out a slice, but before he could take a bite, he turns to you. Have you eaten, Voya? Um, so we haven't, but I think I'm going to leave it right here now. Okay, now I'm going to stop. Thank you guys so much. I truly appreciate it. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Peace and love. Stay safe out there, everybody. I'm losing my voice. Bye.